Hello all, in this lesson we are going to be studying um, elastic potential energy, which is has a lot to do with springs. Um, Hooke's law is the equation that we'll learn in this lesson. So the bookwork that's associated with this lesson is 39 to 56. Please copy this down as a header for um, your classwork page. And then right underneath that, please write this aim. How do springs behave as they exert force? And then beneath that aim, please copy down these particular do now questions and sketch this diagram. Pay attention to the sizes of the masses. They're supposed to be different. Well, these should all be the same, and this one should be larger. Um, and then copy these questions. Don't answer them, though. All right, so elastic potential energy is actually, it's just the energy that's stored in a spring um, when it's been compressed or when it has been extended. Um, the equation is Fs is Kx. Fs means the, um, the force of the spring, and that is going to be equal to K, which is called the spring constant which is, it's different for each spring. It depends on the material and the way the spring was constructed. And x is the distance that the spring has been compressed or extended from its equilibrium position. So in the diagram below, you'll see an unstretched spring. This is what we would call equilibrium position when it hasn't been extended and it hasn't been compressed. And here we've added a weight to it. Um, which is going to be either the Fg, or it could be Fs, as you could imagine, if the spring is in equilibrium. But um, in any case, the, it would stretch the spring. And this is, remember, this is where the equilibrium position was. So if you stretch the spring this much, then the x, or the distance from equilibrium, is right here. A lot of people make the mistake of thinking that the distance from equilibrium is like the whole distance, but it isn't. It's just the distance from where the spring is now to where it would be if there was nothing happening to it. Um, if you add a weight that's twice as massive as the original, so it's more mass down here, then you should expect twice the um, elongation from equilibrium. And it's pretty easy to see that up here in the equation. If you have um, double the weight, then you would get double the x because a constant, like a spring constant, wouldn't change once the spring has been constructed. So my question is right now, um, what kind of relationship exists between the force of a spring and the elongation or the compression from equilibrium? And of course, that would be a direct relationship because when you double the weight on the spring, you double the distance from equilibrium. Before I move on from this slide, I would just point out that um, Fs is going to be newtons. It could be, you know, it could be weight or it could be the force of the spring because they're going to be equal. Um, X is going to be in meters, which means that K, our spring constant, is going to be in newtons per meter. So you'll probably do a lab a lot like this with Mr. Ran in lab. Um, it's a pretty simple setup. You just need to have a spring and like a ruler, some way to measure distance and a weight. And you can really easily confirm um, the equation Fs equals Kx. So when you look at a question like the following, what's the slope of a line of Fs versus x? Um, it helps to visualize a graph where you have Fs on the y-axis and x on the x-axis, and um, think about what the slope would be for that. So slope is rise over run, um, which in this case would be fs over x. If you've been paying attention, you probably know that fs over x would be equal to k. So that means that when you look at the slope of a line on a graph like this, fs versus x, you can determine the spring constant by calculating a slope. So one thing I did here in my little sketch was I indicated the different um, values for k that you might see on a graph like this. And um, the largest value for k would be the one in black here because it has the largest slope. And the lowest value for k would be the one in blue because it has the lowest slope. I'm also going to add that the stiffness of a spring um, is really just described as K. So the stiffest spring is this black K, 
And the um, softest or weakest spring is the blue K. All right, so the next question I have is, what would the slope of a line of x versus fs be? So I'm only putting this in because it comes up now and again in multiple choice questions. Um, so I just wanted to make sure you're prepared for that. Um, I guess be prepared that it might be on a quiz or something, because that's the reason why it came up to, in my brain to go over this. But um, in any case, um, if you do x versus fs, then the graph looks like this. The what comes after the versus that comes on the x-axis. So the x is on the y, the displacement's on the y-axis, and the force is on the x-axis. So fs is kx, that's our standard equation, and that means that k is fs over x. Um, but we're looking for kind of the opposite of that right now, because the slope of this graph would be the rise over the run, or x over fs. So it's the opposite of this. Um, so what I did was I just took the reciprocal of both sides. So I said 1 over k is um, x over fs, which means that um, the slope of a line of x versus fs is actually 1 over k. It's not the same thing as k exactly. Um, it's the inverse of k. Another way that we could describe k, I mentioned earlier, it's um, stiffness of the spring. All right, so here are a couple of graphs. One of them will utilize what I just went over about the reciprocal of k, and the other one will just represent k. And I can prove that right away because you can look at the axes. In the one on the left, we have force on the y-axis with displacement on the x. Um, and on the second graph, we have displacement on the y-axis and force on the x. So um, the slope is going to be um, it's going to have a different meaning in the two graphs. So um, in the first question, I want to know what's the spring's spring constant, show your work. And um, in the second question, I want to know the spring constants of both A and B, but be careful because in these two, the spring constant um, may not be what you think it is right away. So when you're dealing with a diagram that has the force on the y-axis and the um, the displacement on the x-axis, that's the more straightforward one. So going from the equation fs is k over x, if I want to know the spring constant, I just need to do fs over x. And that um, is matching up perfectly with this graph because the um, rise is fs and the run is x. So I just need to solve for the literal slope and that will give me the literal spring constant. So the rise overall, I think I can judge pretty clearly from there. So um, it's the rise is 1, in this case, Newton. And the run is looking like 0.4 um, meters. So 1 divided by 0.4 is going to be our slope. And I got 2.5 newtons per meter as my answer. So that's the spring constant, and that's my work. All right, so for the second question, it wants to know the spring constants of springs A and B. Um, I'm going to start out the same way, and then I'm going to show you a key difference. Um, so K apparently is Fs over X, right? Um, this is just from the original equation, actually. And um, one, so that would be slope, right, in a normal graph. But in this graph, um, we have the rise as X and the run is F. So it's literally the opposite of this. Um, what I'm going to do is instead of calculating a slope on this graph, I'm going to calculate the inverse of the slope. Or in other words, instead of calculating rise over run, I'm going to calculate run over rise because that's going to give me the opposite of slope. So I put my note in there, and um, I'm just going to go ahead and start. So for spring A, um, Keeping in mind that the slope on this graph is um, 1 over k, so I'm going to do the opposite of slope to get k. Um, I'm going to do the run over the rise for spring A. So for spring A, I'll just label this. And its run is coming down to here, which looks like 2.8. I'm going to do it over the rise, and the rise for that one is 0.3. Now for spring B, 
Again, I'm going to be doing run over rise, which is the inverse of slope, so that I can get the actual value for k here. The run is 4.0. It was pretty easy to read that one. Um, and the rise for b looks like it's 0.26, I believe. 0.26. So I'm going to calculate those, and I'll be right back. So I was able to calculate that the spring constant for spring A was 9.33 newtons per meter, while the spring constant for spring B was 15.38 newtons per meter. I do think this is um, worth mentioning, this next part here, which is that normally on a graph whose axes have force versus displacement, the... Um, the largest spring constant would be the one who has the steepest slope. But on a graph that flips those axes and has the displacement on the y and the force on the x, the spring that has the largest spring constant is actually the one with the lowest slope. And that comes all the way back to the idea that in this particular graph, the slope is actually the inverse of spring constant rather than the spring constant. So spring B had the largest spring constant, but its slope was the lowest in this graph. All right, we have a sample problem here where um, we have um, some pretty basic charges. Um, what we need to do is mark an appropriate scale on the um, axis labeled average elongation, plot the data points, draw the line of best fit, and then use, it, use our graph to calculate the spring constant K. One of the things I do when I'm um, trying to mark an appropriate axis is I first count how many um, grid points there are along the axis, and I just counted 28. And I know that um, the largest one that I'm going to have to list is a 0.2. So I'm just going to say that um, each one of these things is like a 0 0.01, and um, then I will get all the way up to like 0.28. So there's my appropriate axis, um, so that part's done. And I just need to, at this point, plot the data points and then draw the line of best fit before I calculate k. So I went ahead and plotted those data points, and the line of best fit is not a line that connects every data point. Instead, it's just a line that connects most of the data points and shows any trends, even if that trend is not linear. Um, in this case, the trend is linear, and it's because of the linear um, structure of the equation fs is kx. But um, in any case, I'm just going to draw the line of best fit, which is going to include almost every one of those points. Um, it looks like to me I have a small outlier here, um, but again, I probably could have been more careful, and who knows, um, maybe they are all on the same line. But in any case, I now need to use my graph to calculate the spring constant of k. So that's the last thing I need to do. Um, if I have force on the y-axis, like I do here, and if I have elongation on the x-axis, like I do here, then I can use just the slope of this line to calculate k. Um, k would be fs over x, so that is definitely the slope. So the total rise in this equation is, um, or in this graph, is 5. And the total run is 0.2. So I just need to calculate that to get my value for the spring constant. The value I got was 25 newtons per meter as my final answer. So... At the beginning of this slide, I'm showing you sort of like a fancy derivation of how we can get the next important equation that we're going to use, which is for potential energy of the spring. Um, but this is the final version of the equation that we'll need to use. It is on your reference table, and it gives us the potential energy of the spring, and the equation simply reads it's one-half of the product of k and x squared. So there is still a direct relationship between k and potential energy of the spring, but now we have a direct squared relationship between the elongation or compression of the spring and the potential energy of the spring. 
So this brings up um, a really important um, graphical analysis question, uh, which is based on the beginning of this derivation up here, uh, which basically just says that work is um, Fs times x, which is the force of the spring times x. You should be thinking that this is similar to work is force times distance. Um, so in any case, um, let's draw a graph here that has Fs versus x, so Fs and x, and let's say that the graph looks like that. And the question is, what could be found by doing the area under the curve? So in this graph, um, the area under the curve is going to be found by doing um, 1 half bh. Um, the 1 half isn't going to affect anything, so I'll leave it out in this next step. But the base of this triangle is um, x, and the height is fs. If we replace um, these letters, A, X, and FS, with other letters that mean the same thing, then um, the X is a, it's really a distance, so I'll put a D, and the FS is just a force. So what you can see is happening here is that you're getting force times distance, which is work. So if I want to calculate the area under a curve like this, what I'm really going to be finding is work or energy. It's so it could be the potential energy of the spring or the work done in compressing the spring. I think you can imagine just how helpful this might be on um, many questions. So please, please do write this down and try to commit that to memory. Let's do a sample problem. Let's calculate the elastic potential energy stored in the spring in the previous sample problem, um, the one where we had to make the graph, and when a force of two and a half newtons is applied to it. So since we're using the graph here, um, I suggest using um, the concept just discussed, where since we're calculating the potential energy, um, we could, which is going to be um, the same as work, right? Then I'm just going to calculate the area under the curve at the value 2.5. So when we get to 2.5 um, newtons applied to the spring, we're at the red dot. So I'm going to carry that down to the x-axis, and I'm going to mark out just a sort of symbol that means I'm calculating area under the curve, because the area under the curve is going to give me this equation. W is Fs times x. Um, so I'm going to use, since it's a triangle, I'm going to use the 1 half bh equation. And we have the value 1 half. The base of the triangle is 0.1. And um, the height of that triangle, of course, is 2.5, which means that the um, amount of energy that's going to be stored in the spring is 0.125 newtons, and that also is going to be the amount of work used in compressing or elongating the spring. So I just made a note of that, and I hope that you will as well. And lastly, before I move on from this slide, I just would also point out that there is a way to do this question using the equation PES equals 1 half KX squared, um, although I do recommend the graphical method for solving this. Um, but you could have done this. You could have done 1 half, and then the K that we had found earlier was 25. And when you get to a force of 2.5, the elongation or compression is 0.1. So you could just do 0.1 squared. And, of course, you get the same answer of... 0.125 newtons, but um, so either or uh, either one of these things is appropriate. But I think that they were asking you to do this graphically, but since they wanted you to use your previous answer. And with that, we've reached the pair up. As usual, I will make a copy of this, so you don't need to um, copy them all down. But feel free to take a look. And here's your summary, which you do need to copy down. It will immediately follow the um, do now questions, which you had copied down um, earlier on that second piece of paper for classwork. Good night, and thanks for watching.